Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy February. Happy February. And happy 99th freaking episode. Oh my god, it's wow. our last double digit episode. Yep, ever. We're moving to triple. Yep, wow. Guys, be prepared. Next week is going to be such a fun episode. Y'all are mm-hmm. not ready. The big one yeah. hundo. I know. I'm hoping I can finish um, my my story by then. Like, I already started it, and I hope it's going to be good. I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it will like, be. We got, we got stuff to do during the week, so I'm like, we I got to make time. But we're, we're busy people, but, you yeah. know, we do this for y'all, so. Well, we'll get through it. As well um, as for us. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. It's, it's going to be real juicy, and I am mm-hmm. just so, so hype for it. So definitely be sure to, you know, come back around next Wednesday for mm-hmm. that. Um, in other news, tomorrow, when you guys are listening, if you listen to this on the day it comes out, um, is Groundhog Day. Yes, it is. So we thought it might be fun to make a little prediction of if little Phil, Phil boy is going to see his shadow or not. So what do you think, Savannah? Um, I think he's not going to see his shadow and there's going to be an early spring. I, that's my hope. However, I think he... Is going to see his shadow. You know, see, I think, all right, realistically, I'm pretty sure he always sees his shadow and goes back in. Yeah, I think so. so. <laughs> but, you know, no, it's definitely happened a couple of times he didn't see his shadow in my lifetime. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. more times than not, it's, he does. Yeah. See, and now I'm just thinking that, like, this is, this is an American holiday. Like, yeah. other people in other countries are like, what are they talking about? Oh, my gosh. About? Guys, this is a holiday. Okay, we don't. Ha- we still have to go to work and stuff, so it's not like a paid holiday. But it's called Groundhog Day, where we literally take a physical groundhog, like the animal, out of a little cage and just see, does he see a shadow or not on this specific day? Yes. And that's supposed to determine if we're going to have, like, I don't know, how many weeks is it? Yeah, I don't know. It's a certain amount of like weeks four of or winter. Eight, either four or eight more weeks of winter or if we're going to have an early spring. Oh, I think it's eight more weeks of winter or yeah. an early spring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he sees a shadow, that means he's running back inside and going to hibernate longer. And if he doesn't, then he'll come out because it's spring already. Mm-hmm. And in my so head, that's what it honestly, is. that's kind of backwards. But <laughs> and I've always thought that. But yeah, no. Why? Us, because I feel like if he didn't see his shadow, it's, like, cold and wintry outside, you know? Yeah. And, like, if well, he does see well, his shadow, that means the sun's out. And it might be getting a little bit warmer and it should be spring. But, I mean, I guess I see. Yeah, way. because he's going inside to hibernate longer. Yeah. You know? No, I get it. Oh, well, yeah, no. It I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, I feel like now I'm getting it wrong. Is that right? You know, I don't know. I don't I'm know. pretty sure. <laughs> Us Americans are real weird with this whole tradition we have going on. Yeah. Anyway. Like, guys, I think it... The, the, um, Groundhog's not really going to tell us that information. I know. You know? Yeah, I, th- I think it, like, is, like, a... I feel like it's, like, a pagan holiday. I don't even know. Honestly, <laughs> like it, it, started, pro- it probably is. It seems like it. Like, it does. with, with um, some of the stuff we've talked about, like, mm-hmm. how it involves, like, animals. Yeah. No, I totally and believe that. It, yeah. We should maybe look at man. We should look into it. Okay. I know. Guys, I didn't we'll look even, into it. I didn't even really think about Groundhog Day at all. Um same. But geez, I should have I should have looked at the history of that for this episode instead. I know. <laughs> it's okay. Say save it. Juju. Yeah. Um, write that down. And oh my gosh. Okay, I know we posted your assistant and we've talked about her already, but like Yes. Guys, I don't think we talked about the fact that I met her. And oh, I also don't think we announced her name. Did we? Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. So her name is Eggplant Parm. <laughs> Eggplant Parmy. She's the cutest, you guys. I love all animals, but I'm not kidding. I'm stealing little Eggplant Parm because okay. she's so sweet. I opened the door, and you know, cats honestly are normally skittish. No, no, no. This little girly ran straight up to me and started like purring on my leg, and I was literally crying. Mm-hmm. It was so cute. She laid on our yeah. laps. Oh. <laughs> It was just the sweetest thing. So, um, Eggplant Parm, if you're listening, I'm going to need you to write that down. First mm-hmm. She is. She's right oh, here. Perfect. She got her little notepad. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay, we'll, we'll put it on the calendar for next year. Mm-hmm. And we'll we'll talk about it near next um, Groundhog Day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
For sure. Because, you, you know, like, by the time the, the next episode comes out and then the next one, it won't be relevant anymore. So we're just going to, we're, we're pushing it off exactly. another year. Yeah, we'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, but moving right on along, guys. Um, if you miss it, if you don't follow us on Instagram, okay, I know we've talked about it, but um, we have, me and Savannah have matching alien Build-A-Bears. Yes, Okay, and their do. name, Ned and Nebula. They're very mm-hmm. cute. And um, for Christmas, I actually, you know, got us those bears. But then Savannah, in return, got our little bears, made shirts for them that have, like, Mysteries, Myths, and Legends, like our logo, so cute on it. And then made me a Mysteries, Myths, and Legends cup with my name on it. Guys, it's Mm -hmm. so cute. If you haven't seen it, please go to our Instagram, check it out. And yeah. if you guys are interested in any merch, DM us on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I was able to do this because um, my mom has her little business. Well, I guess I shouldn't say little. I was just saying, you know, she has her business. Yeah. <laughs> um, she has her business called Luxie and Luna. And um, you can go to her Instagram, too. We mm-hmm. have Yeah, it's linked some below. Her- tag yeah linked below but um she has like the supplies and stuff to make this stuff so i was able to use some of that to make some stuff for us so now now we might start making some merch but like not a lot i mean just like as requests come in for sure sure but we've had some requests so if you guys are interested hit us up yeah yeah we'll see what we can do for you Mm -hmm. sure will but other than that Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But that's all the intro topics I have this week. What about you, Savannah? Yeah, so I think we can get right on into it. Let's do it. Um, So I think you probably have heard of this before. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to be talking about the city of El Dorado. Oh my gosh, I love El Dorado. (laughs) So what, what do you have... Like, what do you know about El Dorado? So there's definitely a movie. And I guess <laughs> um, I was obsessed with it when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't really actually remember what it's about. Yeah. It, w- w- it was animated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Road to El Dorado. Yes, yes, yes. The Road to El Dorado. Yes. I, yeah. That's so, you just pulled that memory from such a deep crevice <laughs> in my mind. I know. It's such a good movie. I was obsessed with it, too. Dude, why can't I even remember it now? So, you know, it's good. I'm starting... We're starting fresh right now, See, but... Yeah. I, um... I don't remember the main character's names, but I know it was, like, two Spanish guys mm-hmm. um, who mm-hmm. were just, like, going to find treasure in the New World or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they come across El Dorado, and then there's this girl who helps them along, and they pretend to be gods. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what is so funny is that we look back and, like, these are, like, the movies we watched in our childhood. And it's no wonder why we are where we are today. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah. And also, um, another thing, like, l- thinking back on that movie, um, like, I know the history behind it now. Because it's, like, they were just, like, colonizers, mm-hmm. which is kind of gross but for sure you know no for sure like most of our stories can't even lie they're they got some grossness in it you know yeah yeah but it's just like it's weird how i mean it makes sense they they like took this story that i mean has some truth to it and made these guys look better than they actually were i Mm. guess i mean i guess they did portray them as like lying about being gods so yeah yeah well okay now i'm gonna have to go rewatch that movie oh i know me too (laughs) i need to i didn't see if it was on any streaming or anything but Mm -hmm. it it has to be somewhere it definitely is no question is it disney i don't know i don't know that's what i was wondering i'm gonna look it up while you continue yeah okay so I actually, that was, like, my second point was the movie The Road to El Dorado. Um, so we talked about that. <laughs> that. Um, uh, so El Dorado, like, it's mainly, um, it's the, the city of gold, really, yes. is what is what it comes down to. Ooh, I love that. I love that yes. um, aesthetic, you know. Also, I just want to yeah. say um, The Road to El Dorado is on Peacock, so oh, okay. there you okay. go. Good to know. Um also, I wanted to mention, because Garrett wanted me to mention, <laughs> Okay, he he told me that um, One Piece 
which is, you yes. know, he's obsessed with One Piece. Mm-hmm. Yes, he sure is obsessed. If you know what that is, then you know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said that it's related to El Dorado because they go to a city of gold at one point. Oh. And that just, like, made me think about how, like, in a lot of random media, they go to a city of gold. 100%. You know? Like, most movies. Yeah, Not most, like, but, adve- like, a lot. Adventure movies. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Like, National yeah. Treasure. We mentioned that, like, every episode. They went yeah. to the underground city of gold. Yeah. Yeah. So that um, that probably has some links to El Dorado. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to get behind where that comes from today. Yay. So um, in the 16th and 17th centuries, a while ago, um, Europeans believed that there was a place in the New World, which is, you know, the Americas, with tons of money and gold there. Um, and this place they called El Dorado. Um, it has not been found, even to this day. Mm. So Sad. They have not proved this to be true. Um, so, so where does this legend come from, though? You know? Yeah. Like, did somebody just make it up one day? Mm-hmm. Is there actually some truth to it? Um, is it similar to Atlantis, maybe? Right. Um, also, a side note, I did cover the legend of Atlantis on episode one. Mm. But, like, I might redo it one day because, honestly, episode one... <laughs> Guys. I episode think one, we hate it. We hate it's it. It's very cringe. Um, and I think I could have covered it a lot better. Yeah. I definitely feel the same way about yeah. my first story, which was Pain Road. So, yes. maybe we'll have a redo one day. Yes. Even though, if you guys don't remember or aren't here from day one, we recorded that episode five times before we, we released did. it. And it still is that bad. So it was it was really bad. And our audio sucked. It's just like everything sucked. <laughs> yeah. So maybe don't go back and listen to that, but just wait for me to redo it. Yeah, it'll be soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, OK, so anyways, back to El Dorado. Um, people believed that it was in South America. Okay. And the story of El Dorado sort of has some truth to it, in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it comes from Spanish conquistadors sort of brought this idea back to um, Europe with them when they, you know, they came over to South America and they sort of saw and heard some stuff. And then they made up this story, sort of, or like they they thought that this was real. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it a little. Um, so they came to South America in like the 16th century, and they heard about indigenous people there, the um, in the Andes Mountains, mm-hmm. which is now like Colombia. Um, and these were the. Um, Muisca people. I think I'm saying that right. See, we're we're so bad about saying yeah, pronouncing so sorry. things. Pronunciation is not people. our strong suit. Yeah. Um. And I know I could have just looked it up, but I forgot to. Okay. Mm-hmm. It happens. <laughs> um. But anyways, I just scrolled down by accident. <laughs> <laughs> So, in in their culture, when a new chief or, like, a ruler came into power, they had, like, a ceremony for him at Lake, uh, Lake Guadavita. Um, usually, yeah, I know, it's, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, usually the nephew of the previous ruler would become the new ruler. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've, like, never heard of that before. No, me neither. You know? Usually it's, like, the son. Yeah, always, I feel nephew. like. nephew. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, there was um, a long initiation process and then a ceremony to, you know, welcome in this new ruler. So, the chief or ruler, he was covered with gold dust and then submerged into the lake. Oh, What? Yeah, so he he went out on a boat into the middle of the lake and dove in. Covered in gold dust? Yes. That's pretty iconic. Yeah, honestly. (laughs) Um, And gold and jewels were thrown into the lake as well. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. 
they were thrown into the lake for the god that was um he lived underwater Mm -hmm. so and that's probably why they um the ruler he like dove into the lake because you know the god lived in there Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so the spaniards heard about this or i don't know if they witnessed it or just heard about it but after that they began to call the chief el dorado which meant the gilded one Mm. so um it was actually originally el hombre dorado which was like the golden king Mm -hmm. but um over time it became it became the city of el dorado which is like the golden city also far better of a name than any of those other ones like the city of el dorado it goes hard yeah i know i wish it was a real place i know um i think there are when i was looking this up there were actual cities named that but they're obviously not like yeah, the real yeah, one. Not the real one. I mean, maybe yeah. that it is real. We just haven't found it yet. <laughs> I mean, it could be. I don't know. Um, and because they they would like dress their king in all gold and like throw all this gold into the lake, um, the Spanish thought that they were super super wealthy people. Um, but they actually didn't think of their mo- their gold as like money. What you know. Yeah. It was just like an offering to the gods to them. It mm-hmm. was it was more of a spiritual item. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of it's like weird to think about like you know without the so influence different. yeah without the influence of other cultures like gold isn't worth anything to them really it's just worth like spiritual stuff to them yeah that's really crazy how how different it is mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, like, what if we decided some other random thing was worth money instead of gold? Right. It you could know? be anything. Squishmallows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll, so. um, I'll donate my Squishmallow to the gods. <laughs> not not my big baby Yoda one, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just See, a little that one's one. worth something to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so the legend sort of grew from it being a man, um, to a city, to a kingdom, and then to an entire empire. Okay. The whole spectrum. Yeah. (laughs) So that's how, like, the idea of El Dorado sort of grew, um, which is interesting. Like, that sort of, it sort of discredits it for me, you know, that it started out as, like, you're just talking about one guy. Yeah, me too, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess it could still be a thing, but <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. A little suspicious. Yeah. So the indigenous peoples there, they were conquered by the Spanish, of course. Mm. Sadly, um, conquered, a.k.a. like probably forced to, I don't know, give up their land and their culture mm. and everything. Most definitely. Or like killed. Yeah. Even worse. Yeah. Um, but anyways, they were, the Spanish came in in the 16th century and, um, of course, like with any conquering, their culture died out, um, and some traditional practices did stay and were continued to be practiced, um, such as using gold in ceremonies. So I guess at least they, they kept that a little bit, Mm -hmm. but it did die out a lot. Wow. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so after this, after they sort of took over the area, the Spaniards, they found a bunch of gold in the area, um, near, um, the northern coast of South America. And so they thought that there must be a place full of gold and jewels in the interior of the continent. Oh, okay. They're like, we, we got to get in there and (laughs) we'll get some gold. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, never know. Um, so they they never ended up finding El Dorado, but they did find the lake that they were throwing that they threw all the gold in and everything, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and they tried to drain it in fifteen forty five. Oh wow, wow! 
because they're like, well, obviously we need to get all this gold. Mm -hmm. So not, not very good, but, but they did, they did end up lowering the lake a little bit. Um, they lowered it enough to find and take hundreds of pieces of gold. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and honestly, this is really bad. Bad juju. Like, they're... Horrible juju. They're stealing from a god. From the gods? Yo. Yeah. That's... Listen, I would know I would do anything for money, but I don't know if I would do that. Yeah. That seems like an instant curse on my life. It really... Yeah. And all my future children. Like, that's Mm -hmm. what it's giving. But they weren't thinking about that. No, they didn't care. They wanted the money. Mm Mm-hmm. So, there were two main sort of, like, explorers, I guess you could say, um that went to try to find El Dorado. So the first one is um, uh, Jimenez de, de Quesada. Mm-hmm. He was Spanish. And him and his army of 800 men went out looking for El Dorado and these indigenous peoples. Um, and they went through the jungle and many, many died on the way. And they did end up finding these people eventually. Um, and that's when they got conquered and everything. <laughs> wow. That's, that is so bad. Yeah. That is so bad. Uh, and, you know, there, there's, um, it is crazy because the gold objects that they came across when they, when they got there. Mm-hmm. Um, the Spanish, they were like amazed at these gold objects because they're, they were crafted in ways that they had never seen before. Oh, I bet they were absolutely shaking in their boots. Yeah. Yeah. Cause these are, I mean, they were just out of Europe and like, I guess, you know, there's way different ways of sculpting things and like also crafting just, things. Like any gold is cool. So I like even today yeah. in 2023. So I can't imagine like in 15 in the 1500s like a cool like sculpted piece of gold. Yeah, I would exactly. just stare at it for hours. Mm-hmm. And I bet like it sounded like gold was like very like there's a lot of gold down there. Right. And there probably isn't that much gold in Europe. Yeah. It seems mm-hmm. I don't know. Definitely. Um. Got to look into the geography for that one, but that's what it sounds like anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so because of, because the gold has monetary value to the Spanish, many of the original objects that they took were melted down over time. Mm, yeah, um, typical. S- yeah, so a lot is lost from European greed. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Gross. Um... Some of the items were preserved and are in the British Museum in London, but, like, I don't really get why they're in the British Museum in London. Right. That seems like the absolute wrong place to be. Yeah. I think a lot of things are in there from, like, countries that Britain sort of took over, Mm -hmm. which is, like... (laughs) That's just a whole other problem. Yeah. I was like, I was going to say something. Let me not even get into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jimenez, he was the one who sort of like took over this country. Um, or this, yeah, mm-hmm. these people. So, yeah. Um, and the other guy who was like looking for El Dorado, I mean, a lot of people were, but these are the, this is the other main guy was Sir Walter Raleigh. Why does that name um, sound familiar to me? Because <laughs> maybe because Raleigh maybe. is a state in, <laughs> is a city in North Carolina. Maybe, but that whole name sounds familiar to me for some reason. Um. Yeah, I think. See, it it sounded familiar to me too. I don't know why. I don't know if I looked it up. I'm trying to read through my notes here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're. I don't good. know. Um. Hmm. I guess we'll. Maybe we'll have to look him up again. Yeah. Um, but he made two trips to uh, to look for El Dorado uh, to the northern coast of South America. And on his second trip in 1617, he sent his son, um, Watt Raleigh, on an expedition up the um, Orinoco River. Um 
so basically like they set up camp and they're like okay son like i'm too old you go up and go and try to find something Mm -hmm. um so he stayed back at his camp and Watt Raleigh, he was unfortunately killed no. in a battle with Spaniards. What? No. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets worse because Walter, he returns to England and he's beheaded. Oh my lord. For what? <laughs> because King James said that he disobeyed orders to avoid conflict with the Spanish. I would have done the same thing. I would have just stayed in South America. Like what? honestly, yeah, I would know. I would have not gone back for sure. <laughs> like what? What's he gonna do? <laughs> Get beheaded is what he's gonna do. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I guess there were some like other reasons too, but that was a big reason. That's a big L um, on his part. Yeah. So unfortunately, El Dorado, like the actual city, um, city of gold, was never found. Um, and honestly. I have a feeling it's just imaginary. Yeah. It's just a legend. Yeah. Um, it was based off of something that was kind of, you know, real Mm -hmm. at one point. Yeah. And now it's just in fiction. But I do have something to end with. Um, a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. Ooh. Yeah. So, it goes, Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow ride boldly ride if you seek for el dorado mm-hmm. what's that from um i don't know <laughs> mm, okay hold on wait read it again okay <laughs> okay it goes over the mountains of the moon down the valley of the shadow ride boldly boldly ride if you seek for el dorado Sort of, sort of messed that up there. But no, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. it just sounds so familiar to me. Um, yeah. Okay, I looked it up. It's actually the poem itself is called El Dorado. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm very. I know so many Poe stories, but I actually don't know if I read that one before. But wow, love that. Also, yeah. I was gonna mention that I don't know if anybody saw the new Dora movie. It's not like new now, but like the newer one with like the real people in it. Oh, Dora I I haven't Explorer. I haven't seen it, but I've I've wanted to. I watched it. I think it's called Dora the Explorer in the Lost City or something like that, and it's literally about her finding El Dorado. Yeah, yeah. So see, like a lot of it is in a lot of fiction because it's a good story. A I great mean, story. Who wouldn't want to go find a city of gold? Mm-hmm. You know, it seems amazing. Right. Like ugh, I wish it was real so we could go find it. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, it probably like the city of these indigenous peoples that I was talking about. That oh, probably sure. was, like, a city of gold. For sure. And for they sure. ruined it. The Spanish ruined it. Yeah, it's, like, completely gone now. But, like, it definitely was a thing. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. that's so sad. So sad for those people, honestly. Mm-hmm. Heartbreaking. Wow. I, all I can think about is that movie, though, because now I really want to go watch it again. <laughs> yeah. And Dora. Honestly, can't lie. That movie's pretty good. Yeah. Wait, is the Dora one on anything? Oh, it's for sure. Yeah, I think Paramount. it might also be on Paramount. Or did I say okay. Peacock before? I think Dora's on Paramount. See, and I don't have Paramount or Peacock. Mm. So. Okay, well. So I'm just going to suffer. <laughs> it's I not good. I can't watch it. That's not good for you. Um, It might be on like tu- Tuvu or whatever, you know, like the free. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. But <sighs> great story. Absolutely loved it. But I guess moving along to my story okay this week for you i have the legend of the san fernando cathedral never heard of that really yep me neither um Mm. so i have a haunted story for you guys this week um so i'll go ahead and set the scene so you know where we're at so this it's a cathedral a church um in san antonio texas and the San Fernando Cathedral is actually the oldest and most haunted cathedral in all of Texas. Oh, okay. So, most importantly, the most it's the oldest, you know. Mm-hmm. So, that's yeah. crazy. I don't know how many cathedrals in Texas are haunted, but um, it's also the oldest. So, that's crazy. So Got some cowboys in there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure there's some cowboys in there. No mm-hmm. doubt about it. Um, so between 1738 and 1750, like the original San Fernando Cathedral was erected. So 1700s, 
pretty long time ago and it's still standing today. So that's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, It was named after Spain's Ferdinand III of Castile. So, you know, he had his own little cathedral. That's pretty cool. I would love a cathedral to be named after me, honestly. Yeah. I mean, anything, anything. (laughs) True. Literally any single thing. (laughs) I mean, Um, maybe not anything, but like most, a lot of things. No, I'd say maybe anything. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, So, so this guy, Ferdinand, um, the reason they named this, you know, cathedral after him, he um, lived in Spain for a while and, you know, lived actually like at the church, like while it was being built and stuff. And then in 1868, way ahead in the future, going real far, um, they obviously, like, at that point, it had been, like, over 100 years. So she needed a little restoration, you know. Mm -hmm. So they were restoring it, and they used used the original foundation of the church, um, and they kept, like, part of the sanctuary of the cathedral. But other than that, they, like, kind of tore everything else down and rebuilt around it and this time like the style like the first style was very spanish you know very typical cathedral looking but the second time they did it the style was very like dark gothic revival style which i personally love so cute Mm -hmm. so over the years you know the church definitely been going through some big changes so keep that in mind um so another hundred years in the future um 1936 Um, people were doing more renovations on the building. And when they were doing these renovations, they actually found hundreds of thousands of bones, um, under, under the cathedral Um, that they didn't know about. Okay. Like, obviously there's like a cemetery there, but they didn't know about these bodies. And they found out that they were actually men who had fought in the battle of the Alamo. Oh my God. Wait, what? And they just... They just yeah, because like the Alamo was like fought there, like on that land. So they just like died there or like got buried there, but like hundreds of them, thousands of them, on this. And they just built this on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. Literally, literally. So they find these hundreds of bodies, right? Like in the ground, and they're like, "Oh wow, that's crazy. What should we do about that? Let's maybe just build the new portions of the church right on top of the bodies." Um, cause okay. that's such a good idea. So, um, yeah, sure. I mean, honestly, like <laughs> what, what else were they going to do? Move them? I mean, I probably, yeah, would have moved them. <laughs> like, but I like, maybe it's would their, have. It's their final resting place. Like they've been there for so long. I don't know. Yeah. But like to build stuff on top of them. I don't know. Yeah. Have you seen, um, this is a side note. Have you seen the, those, like, there's a there's a McDonald's in um, I don't know if it's Italy or some European country that the floor is like g- glass. Oh yes, I have. Yeah, I have seen that. Yes, and there's somebody like buried under there. Oh okay, I didn't know that part about that. <laughs> and they like couldn't move it. They're like, okay, we're just gonna keep this here, like because we found you know archaeological stuff under here but we're going to just keep it and build a mcdonald's on top wow okay that's even more disrespectful at least this is a church you know yes. that's mcdonald's yeah. <laughs> wow yeah. that's crazy yeah that is so crazy well yeah anyways just like those mcdonald's um they built the church right on top of all those bodies so crazy so during this like disruption of you know these soldiers like place of rest Legend says that the spirits of these men were, like, at that time, like, in 1936, awakened and have never, like, since they started that, like, the 1900s renovation and, like, built on top of the bodies, there has been severe, like, ghost activity going on ever since then. Hmm. So, clearly, you know, they didn't like that. They didn't like being built on top of. Okay. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe I was wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah they oh, no, they like... don't like it. Yeah. See, but <laughs> at all. But um, I don't know, though, because, like, maybe they just shouldn't have built at all. Oh, is, is yeah, the no. the better solution. I completely agree. Yeah. Like, maybe it's time to, you know, just, I don't know, let it go. I don't know. Or, like, keep it the same size. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I don't agree with moving them for yeah. some reason. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah, not maybe the best solution yeah. would have been to not build. I totally. don't know. Totally agree with that. 
Um, so here's what's crazy, okay? So there are, like, some notable people who have been buried here. I have two of them. One of them I don't actually know, and I didn't look into further, but apparently notable. And the one I don't know is named Jim Bowie. Don't know who that is. Sorry, I didn't look it up. But the other person who is said to be buried under um, San Fernando Cathedral is Davy Crockett. Oh, oh my God. Isn't that Davey crazy? Davy Crockett himself. Davy Crockett, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, that's like an American legend. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so he is said to be buried there under the church. Um, and so I did mention before, the, the Battle of the Alamo um, was the... So there were actually a lot of battles like that actually happened on the grounds of this church. But the Alamo obviously was the most like iconic historical event that happened there. Um, and it, so it's actually from the tower of the cathedral. Like they actually used the church in the battle. And so this guy, Mexican General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, um, was standing in the tower of the cathedral and raised the flag of no quarter, signaling the begin the beginning of the battle to the from the Texans to like inside the Alamo. So literally from that church was when the Battle of the Alamo started, like when he raised his flag. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Oh I really God. didn't know that. Um, so yeah. Definitely lots of history. Yeah, I, honestly, this place. I don't I don't know much about the Alamo. I was gonna say like, people I are like, Don't basics. ever forget the Alamo. I don't yeah. even know about it. I, see, yeah, like they <laughs> didn't I don't know. I might have been taught about it, but I don't remember. I don't think I was, <laughs> but you know, the American education system, I mean, what can we say? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Cause like where we live, like, yeah, North I Carolina, think if we were closer, we probably would have got the education. Yeah. The whole East coast. Like why are, why would we learn about that? Exactly. Like, yeah. Who needs to know history? Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe we should educate ourselves a little bit. But, no, we definitely um, should. I'm going to learn about it. I should have some of the... before this, but you know, yeah. Some of this stuff that you're talking about, I'm like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Same. When he when he raised the flag, I knew that. No, but that is like, crazy. No, like, because, no, that's like the first signal of like that, the whole thing starting. Like, that's okay. pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I at least understood that part, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyways, obviously, you know, giving, given all this history, all the war that's going on here, all the bodies, um, it's safe to say that's kind of why this place is considered the most haunted, one of the most haunted churches in America also. So not only is it the most oh, in Texas, really? but yeah, apparently it is. Um, and I know I mentioned before also it's the oldest church. So that's also mm -hmm. crazy. Um, and so as tradition goes, um, apparently in some early churches, many of like the past priests and parishioners, um, like, you know, who worked at the church, were to actually be buried within the walls of the church or beneath the floors of the church. Okay, no, not in the walls. Um, so what? we got bodies under the church, inside the walls, and inside the floors. Okay? Do people still go to this church yes, every they Sunday? Do. Yep, yep. They sure with people in the walls. Oh with my god! People in the walls. People surrounding them in every way, shape, and form. No way. No way. Yes, I do. could not. Yep. And I think we need to go there. <laughs> and oh. these people. And these people know that they're in there, or I guess maybe they don't. I don't know if they do. I mean, they might. Like some people definitely do. Um, but so I just have to assume some people have no idea. That's so cool. Because honestly, oh we've probably been in multiple places where there are bodies like in the walls and we just don't know. In the walls? Well, I don't know. That's just crazy. You yeah, know, that's uh, probably not. But I don't know. That Ah, I just, that's disgusting. I just don't understand. <laughs> yeah. um, like, would that not, okay, not smell? to be gross. Yeah, would yeah. that not smell? Uh, I think it would. <laughs> I think it definitely would. So mm. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, not now, obviously, because they're far yeah gone but like but like at first most definitely yeah. yeah absolutely disgusting so because of all these bodies and all this trauma that happened here very haunted um let's see here so the people most people who go here often report like seeing shadowy figures and spectral faces suddenly appearing on the walls of the cathedral cathedral so now, when I say faces on the wall, like, just appear to people, 
I'm going to read to you how they describe it word for word, okay? They would be looking at the walls on a tour, and all of a sudden, they see, quote unquote, a gaping mouth, two sunken eyes, pretty much the features of a skull. So, Savannah, I sent you a picture before we started recording, and it is actually a picture of that somebody captured of one of these faces that appeared to them in the wall. And so, in the picture, um, if you look kind of down towards the bottom, it's like on like a on a darker brick. Honestly, it looks pretty much exactly like a skull to me. Mm-hmm. So definitely go look at our Instagram so you guys can see the picture too. We'll post <gasps> it. Oh my god, I see it. You see it? Like that's a skull, dude. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I wasn't imagining like brick and like stone walls. Mm-hmm. Well, it's very old, so. See, that makes a lot more sense with, like, putting people on the walls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, because yeah. I was, like, imagining, like, my house walls. Like, okay. <laughs> plaster and okay. stuff. I'm like, okay. <laughs> makes more sense. But still, it does freak me out, still. So. For sure. I mean, no, I mean, that's still yeah, disgusting. But yeah, Absolutely. oh my god, you can see a face. I know. Fully. Fully you can see a face. That's, it's crazy. It's so huh. crazy. So, definitely go look at our Instagram to see that picture. Um... So the cathedral's reported hauntings also coincide with those reported like at the Alamo in like several different ways. So people report seeing monks roaming the grounds when nobody's there. Okay. Um, Which apparently that would go along with the Alamo time period. Don't ask me. I don't know. I didn't do much research on on the actual Alamo because I'm I'm not here for a history lesson, you know, Mm -hmm. not really. (laughs) So anyway, Apparently, monks were really, like, prevalent at the time during the Alamo, especially here. So, people report seeing, like, monks walking around, but it's the ghost of monks. So, crazy. Um, And so, let's see here. I Okay. So, also, during that restoration project in the 1900s, when they discovered all those bodies, they also discovered some of the clothing and other objects that they were using at the time. And so they actually did decide that they were going to remove, like, some of the objects that were, like, easily, like, gettable, you know? Like, they didn't have to do too much digging to retrieve or whatever. Um, And so there's, like, a a few items. And those items are, like, locked away in different, like, museums and stuff and are considered to be extremely haunted items. Like, a bunch of crazy stuff goes on with those. So that's interesting, too. So, I didn't write down, like, what goes on with all those because that would have just been too much. But, Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very interesting. So, let's go into a little bit more detail on the specific ghost at this cathedral. So, first we have the dark figure of a man who just seems to kind of just always be hanging around. And his favorite thing to hang around during um, is the ghost tours that they do at this cathedral. So, they do occasionally especially during Halloween time, do some ghost tours because obviously they know it's haunted. It's not all year round. They don't do them all year round. Mm -hmm. But occasionally they have them. And so when they do, um, many of the tour guides and visitors have said that they have noticed like an older guy standing in the back of the group but following them like along the tour. Um, But when they would eventually like look back at the end or whatever, he would be gone. And so eventually, like, when, once this kept happening, the tour guides were like, wait, it's the same guy. And then they realized, like, oh, my gosh, that's not, that's, that's a ghost. That's, that's a little spooky. See, it, as a tour guide, I would be, I would that's, be super spooked to see the same guy over and over again. That is spook magook, if I have ever yeah. heard it in my life. And just, like, imagine, like, because remember when we did those, like, night tours or whatever a couple weeks ago? Yes. Can you imagine if we were we had had just looked around our group of people that we were with and then saw like a random man and like that just wasn't like what I mean yeah. it could have happened and we just never know. Yeah. Mm. Spooky. Yeah. Um. Do you think like the ghost like knows? I I guess he he probably knows that it's a it's a ghost tour and that's why he like showed up. To yeah, it. I really think he does. I because he's like people say he's like very chill. He doesn't ever mess with anybody. He just literally walks with the people, which is honestly sad too but you know he's just hanging out with his friends he just wants friends yeah so people describe him as wearing all black clothes like in the style of like late 1800 early 19th century 
Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, if you go on a tour here, definitely watch out for an older guy standing in 18th century clothes in the back of the group because you might see him. And they don't know his name, but still, look out for him. Yeah. See, what if he, like, do you think he goes to the church? <laughs> well, I think he he goes to church every day because he lives there. Um, oh, well, true. But probably. But, like, goes and sits there like, and people def- just don't notice. I wonder. I really... the same people go every week. Yeah, that's so true. That is so, that's a good point. Hmm. I really want to go to this cathedral. I can't even lie to you. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So as for other ghosts that are at this cathedral, um, I mentioned there were a bunch of ghost monks. Okay. So these ghost monks appear to people as like shadowy people with hoods drawn over their faces. And they're almost always like always spotted at the very back of the cathedral and they're known to, like, be able to, like, manifest and then disappear really quickly. Like, real quick. Like, boom, bam. You look. There's a robed figure in the back. You look back. You look again. It's gone. Huh. That's, that's horrifying. <laughs> no, that's horrifying. Like, monks I know are very peaceful. They don't even talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, uh, that's still scary to me. <laughs> Why do you think they, like, disappear so fast, though? Why would they want to... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I wonder, like, if it has anything to do with, like, if they're, like, strong ghosts. You know, I don't really know the ghost science. But, like, I I heard, allegedly, it takes a lot of energy for ghosts to, like, do things. So maybe they don't have a lot of energy to, like, appear for very long. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that could make sense. Yeah, but, I mean, I have truly no idea. That is absolutely, you know, just a guess. Um, But these monk ghosts are actually the most common ghosts to see here. Um, in the cathedral, they're like pretty much seen literally every single day by people. Oh, well, I mean, that seems like they have strong, a strong power then. Well, yeah, I guess, but it could be like different ones. Yeah. So, you know, who knows? Um, so some people believe that they're just not willing to leave their place of worship, but other people believe that they were not allowed, like they were not able to leave since their physical bodies are more than likely buried within the walls of the church or on the grounds oh. so huh. that they all might literally just actually be stuck there since they're all, all of their bodies are there, which that makes it horrible, you know? Yeah, that is sad. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It is very much so. So moving along, you know, over the years, San Fernando Cathedral's, like, haunted reputation has, like, really grown a lot. You know, we, we love the good haunted things nowadays. So, on Halloween night in 2007, workers had um, started, actually, another restoration project on the cathedral. And they were removing the old plaster from the original stone of the walls. And their, a plan, their plans going in originally were they were going to completely, completely redo the walls. Which, let's just remember, guys, there's bodies in there, okay? So, crazy. So, during this construction, when it was going on, the cathedral was actually still open to visitors. And one of the visitors that night, um, into, like, Halloween night in 2007, he was recording um, this adventure. Because I guess they had let them in for a ghost tour or whatever since it was Halloween. So, he was recording with a video camera. And he captured um, a photo of the marble sarcophagus, like, in the back of the cathedral, which I guess is just something they have in there. And, um, many people actually say, like, they have differing opinions on, like, the legend or whatever, but some people say it's either very, very good luck or very, very bad luck if you touch this marble sarcophagus (gasps) that's in the back of this cathedral. So, I guess he was like, you know, that's, sounds like pretty powerful stuff, let me take a picture of it. So, he's, like, getting it on video and he, or not on video, he takes a picture of the sarcophagus. And when he goes back to look at the picture, he realizes that he captured, even though nobody else was in there, he captured a man kissing a skull on the head. Like what? a skull, like in the oh picture. Um. So obviously like this guy like panics because there's nobody in front of him, obviously, you know, that's crazy. Um. So, yeah, he claims there was nothing there. And then, obviously, he realized, like, I think I just captured a ghost on camera. But, of course, I cannot find this picture anywhere. So, I guess we either have to believe his word or he's a liar. 
<laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. But if that did happen, that's, I don't like that at all. Cause that's creepy. Yeah. I, I want to believe him. I think I'm just going to believe him. Oh yeah. I'll believe him too. I really will. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Cause I mean, just cause I can't find the picture. Like, you know, I didn't try that hard. Yeah. But I also don't know this guy's name. So. Right. You right, know, right. There's only so much I can go off of. Um, mm-hmm. So anyways, pretty much from all accounts that I could tell, the ghost sightings and the ghost events are all still happening at nighttime, like every single night. Okay. And pretty much only it all things only happen at night. So like if you are going, most people are going to this church in the day. So I think people who are going to the church really might not know that it's haunted if they haven't heard about it. Because, like, the haunted stuff only happens at night. Yeah. Um, huh. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, um, the legend, there is actually, like, there is a huge legend about this, you know, church. And so, it says, quote, unquote, come nightfall, you'd have to be something of a daredevil to enter this myth-ridden, myth-ridden ground. These, I, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to rewind that. Yes. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> so it happens. sorry. <laughs> okay. Come nightfall, you'd have to be something of a daredevil to enter these myth-ridden grounds. Um, so, you know, that's the blanket statement. Um, the most fun ghost, I would say, that's at this cathedral is the ghost of a horse. And this horse is a white stallion. Like, how beautiful. A ghost oh. horse that's a white stallion? That seems very magical to me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, this horse is often seen walking at night just outside of the front of the cathedral. Um, and so, sometimes people see the horse or other times people can hear the horse galloping, but, like, no horses around. So, you know, that's pretty cool, too. Is he guarding? Yeah, like, I honestly think so. And I'm like, oh, the little horse. That's so cute. But also, can you imagine, like, if you saw a white horse, like, in the front of this church, and you're like, oh, that's a really pretty horse. And somebody's like, what horse? Like. Yeah, I would, I would be like, am I hallucinating? <laughs> right. would be like, please, or... somebody take me to the hospital right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so San Fernando Cathedral is still an operating church, and they also have, they also do tours of this place, so you can just go in and see, like, not, and not go to the church. Um, so anyway, I'm very much so down. It's also in Texas, and I've always wanted to go to Texas, so, um, yeah, I think we might need to add this one to the list, because honestly, if anything in my life, if any ghost I want to see, honestly, it's a ghost horse. Yeah, I mean, that would that would be cool. This, That's I mean, this saying. place sounds really cool to go to. Exactly. And, like, none of the people are, like, mean, at least not to, you know, the visitors. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If we're chilling, I'm, I'm chilling with the ghosts, hmm. honestly. Yeah, yeah, but that is. I've, um. That's what I I am um, almost had to, um, move to Texas. Oh, yeah. What part of Texas? Uh, Houston. Mm, I don't know how far that is from, um, San Antonio, which is where this is, but. Yeah, I don't really know either. I went when I was, like, five years old because we almost moved there. Um, my dad's work was, like, moving, mm-hmm. so we almost went. Um, and I do – I remember looking at houses there, and everything is a lot bigger in Texas. Like, oh, they're not lying. No, they're not lying. They're definitely not lying. But if you had done that, you would be – you would have such a country accent. I know. I would be – I would be a You'd say, hey, Texas y'all, girl. my name's Savannah. No, and the funny thing is, I think the reason my parents decided not to go is because they didn't want us growing up as Texans. <laughs> honestly, They're like, we don't want our kids to be Texans. Completely people. relatable. <laughs> completely feel that and honestly agree. So, <laughs> no hate I mean, to Texas out there. Yeah, really, no hate, truly no, no hate. hate. <laughs> but also, it's hot down there, yo. Like, it's real hot. Yeah. Yeah, I I would be a totally different person. Maybe I would have gone to this church at one point. Yeah, maybe you would. See, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Um, Absolutely crazy. But yeah, we have to go. We really do. We really do. Because, like, honestly, San Antonio sounds so fun anyway. I'm just saying. Um, Yeah, it does. Eggplant parm, I'm going to need you to add that to the list as well, please. Yes. Like, she might be a baby, but we're working her young. We are. (laughs) Oh, and also, so we brought her to the vet... Um, now talking about my cat, um, we, we brought her to the vet and the Humane Society had said that she was a year and seven months old, but we think that 
she's actually under a year and is actually almost only like seven months. Mm-hmm. And that's what the vet confirmed. No, she confirmed that it? She's, that she's, yeah. she's seven months ish? Yeah, probably. Wow. Because they said that um, they looked at her teeth. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, she's probably under a year. So oh probably like gosh. seven months. We knew it. We knew it. Yeah. She's such a baby. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I feel like this episode's all over the place, but I love it. It's fine. You know what? If you love us, you love us. And also, you better love us. <laughs> yeah. And you know who else I love? Eggplant Parm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Me too. She's so cute. <laughs> Guys, I don't think you understand. I need you to go to Instagram right now. If for anything else, just look at Eggplant Parm. Yeah. Because yep. she's adorable. <laughs> also, the name is hilarious. Quite yeah. hilarious. We love it. But anywho, go rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Go check out our Instagram and let us know if you guys want some merch. But other than that, I don't really think I have anything else for you guys this week. What about you, Savannah? Yeah, I think that is it. All right. Well, then I guess we will see you guys next week. All right. Cue the music. <laughs>